attending the second TGA webinar um, hosted by the TGA and the British Growers Association. Uh, this afternoon we have uh, our pleasure in having Jack Ward, the Chief Executive of the British Growers Association, a grower owned and controlled cooperative based in Louth. Uh, the British Growers are the current Secretariat of the TGA, the Turf Growers Association, uh, and uh, they have been, uh, they have held that office uh, for the last 15 years and, and have done a superb job. Uh, Jack, uh, before joining the British Growers, was the CEO of City and Guilds NPTC, providing vocational qualifications for the land-based industries. He held several posts with the NFU, including Regional Director for the East Midlands and Head of the NFU's Technical Services Department. He is a Nuffield Scholar and went on to become Chairman of the Nuffield Farming Scholarship Trust. He is a former Director of the Off Oxford Farming Conference and became a Fellow of the Royal Agricultural Society of England in 2014. Uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Jack to you now. Stephen, thank you very much for those very kind words um, and welcome everybody to this um, webinar. What I thought might be interesting is just to have a very quick run through of some of the issues that are cropping up at the moment and try and pick out where I think they are of particular interest or relevance, importance to um, the turf grass industry. Let's just start by having a look ahead to the next few weeks because it's going to be pretty frenetic in the run up from now, at least till Christmas and probably beyond. We have in fact only got 114 days left of the transition period. And the transition period is this year um, between our withdrawal from uh, the EU and our full exit on the 31st of December 2020. And I have to say that there is still an absolute mountain to climb. Um, the government is still bogged down with COVID and here we are in the middle of September where I don't know how others feel but it just feels to me as though things are getting out of hand once again and more uncertainty is creeping in rather than less uncertainty. The negotiations with the EU are ongoing um, and there are some major stumbling blocks still ahead. There's this question of you know, achieving a level playing field there's fisheries still to resolve, and then there's the Northern Ireland Protocol, um, you know, which is all adding to the complications. Um, we've got this informal deadline of an agreement with the EU of October, uh, and certainly the public utterances coming out of number 10, which is handling the deal, um, suggest that it can, a deal can be done, but uh, whether a deal can actually be done is, seems to be anybody's guess. And then below, beneath that, um, preparations are ongoing for what is euphemistically described as an Australian style deal, which actually means no deal. Uh, and that could plunge us into you know, a completely different set of situations, which again, the turf grass industry, along with every other um, part of agriculture, is going to have to contend with. I think it's fair to say that the government sees um, the opportunity to exit the CAP and take back control of agricultural policy as being one of the major Brexit bonuses. Uh, and on that basis, I think it's just worth having a quick look at a couple of elements of the agriculture bill, which are of particular importance and relevance to the turf grass industry. The agriculture bill that we've got going through the House of Parliament, it's actually in the House of Lords at the moment, um, is the second iteration of the bill. The first the bill fell as a result of the general election. Interestingly, the second version still cites Theresa Villiers as the Secretary of State. Uh, you will recall that she got sacked in February, and we now have George Eustace heading up um, DEFRA, which I have to say I think is a good thing. I've met George on several occasions. We've had several conversations. He is a grower. He used to grow strawberries down in Cornwall, and I think does understand the industry even if he doesn't get his own way on absolutely everything when dealing with things in cabinet. 
The first thing I just really wanted to share with you is the proposals for an environment land management scheme. Now, I suspect that many of you will benefit from the um, basic payment scheme and the monies that come from the basic payment scheme um, through to uh, farmers. Uh, and as you probably will have picked up, the plan is to phase out the BPS scheme over a seven year period and then move those payments across to the environment land management scheme. Now at this stage, we don't actually know the final quantum of the money which might be available under the land management scheme, but I think it is gonna be fairly significant. And I think the big challenge for a lot of farmers and growers is how might they qualify uh, for any form of payment under the new land management scheme. And what they're planning to do is divide the land management scheme into three. Um, there are going to be three tiers and the first one is going to be focused on incentivizing environmentally sustainable farming and what I sense from that is what the government is looking for is some kind of entry level option that's accessible to as many uh, farmers and growers as they can possibly encourage into the scheme. Uh, and so I think that there may be an opportunity here for turf grass growers uh, and there may be an opportunity to think about schemes which are specifically targeted at, at turf grass that we could put forward to DEFRA as part of the environment land management scheme. Tiers two and three are a bit more specific. Tier two is really aimed at schemes where groups of farmers join together to provide a sort of large uh, area of environmental benefit. Um, and again, there may be opportunities for turf grass growers to join together with other growers in their area to provide these environmental benefits. And then tier three is aimed at specific major landscape change. And for example, one of the big ones that are coming up and could affect the um, fresh produce industry is the possibility of doing something to protect peat supplies in East Anglia. But you know, those are going to be fairly sophisticated. They're going to be very targeted um, and much less of a general application. So there may be opportunities within the land management scheme for the turf grass industry. But again, it's a question of thinking these through and just coming forward with ideas that might appeal to DEFRA and the sector. The second area which is going to be of potential interest is around productivity and, and the government is quite keen in stimulating productivity. It's got a set of figures which suggests that UK agriculture is lagging behind other parts of the world in terms of productivity um, and therefore it sees an opportunity to try and encourage actions which might drive productivity. And it's handed responsibility for developing a productivity strategy to something it's called the Agricultural Productivity Working Group, which is formed out of the Food and Drink Sector Council. It's been chaired by Peter Kendall, who's, as you know, former president of the NFU, former chairman of AHDB. And they've come forward with a series of recommendations. And again, I think what we're looking for here is opportunities for the turf grass industry to and net in with some of the thinking that's going on around productivity. And there are five recommendations that they've come forward with. The first one is all about data. And I'm not quite sure where the turf grass industry, and in fact, where many other sectors of the fresh produce industry um, fit within this data plan. But I think the government can see opportunities in some sectors and principally the supported sectors at like cereals, um, livestock, um, for having better data about what's going on, about encouraging benchmarking um, schemes in order to drive up productivity. And they see this opportunity for capturing and sharing and making better use of um, data as a major plank in their plan to improve productivity. The second recommendation is about um, developing some kind of knowledge exchange system and they've called it evidence for farming. I think they've looked at the way knowledge exchange operates and again I think they're looking mainly at the major sectors in agriculture and have come to the conclusion that it's fairly fragmented and that 
there is merit in getting a more coordinated approach to it. I'm not quite entirely sure how this could work within turf grass, but actually there may be an opportunity for the association here to become um, you know, one of the providers of knowledge exchange, or at least the coordinator of knowledge exchange, because I think that's what they're looking for, is for centres of excellence to deliver knowledge exchange. The third recommendation is all about um, research and development and having a joined up approach to research and development. I think, again, the view is that quite often R&D is fragmented. It's not always absolutely aligned to the needs of um, farmers and growers. And on that basis, it's, you know, there needs to be a review of how it operates and how we make it more relevant to mainstream agriculture. The fourth recommendation is all about uh, agricultural skills and training and getting more people into the industry. And the fifth recommendation, it talks about infrastructure, but one of the key things there is about grant aid and how you use grant aid to drive big improvements uh, in productivity. So as I say, I think there is an opportunity here for the turf grass industry. Um, but what I think we need to be doing is making sure that we've got a compelling statement about the turf industry together with a clear list of asks. Because I think there is a danger that we rely too heavily on the civil service and on DEFRA to come forward with the ideas. But actually, the truth is they know relatively little, particularly about some of the more obscure parts of the industry. And unless we tell them what's happening, what's needed, what the opportunities are, then there's a fairly strong case that they'll overlook it. I think it's just worth ending with a few words about the free trade agreement negotiations that are ongoing at the moment, because potentially they could affect virtually every element of the um, UK economy. Uh, and in that respect, um, the turf grass industry is no different. Um, there will be exports, there will be imports, and it's probably just worth understanding where we are um, with some of these free trade agreements. We've touched on the situation with the EU, and I think it's really interesting to note that this is being handled by number 10, um, rather than by the Department for International Trade, which is handling the remainder of the free trade agreements. So the EU discussions have been well documented, and we go from day to day and we learn a bit more about what's happening or about what's not happening. But some of the other free trade negotiations, you know, capture less of the headlines. The Australia deal and, and New Zealand deal, very much in their early stages, so not too much to report about what's going on there. The Japanese deal is actually getting towards a point when the UK may be in a position to sign up on something. The market access side is still to be agreed. Um, there's this issue about Stilton cheese, which the Secretary of State at the Department has decided to make a big issue because it, if she can get it through, would differentiate the UK's deal from the EU's deal and would give the government the opportunity to say that they have secured a better deal than the one which the UK would have had had it relied on being part of the EU and the new deal the EU has struck with Japan. So, you know, an interesting presentational issue there. As far as the USA is concerned, um, the discussions at the moment are about sanitary and phytosanitary regulations. Uh, market access has yet to be discussed. And we've got the big unknown, which is the presidential elections. And I imagine within the uh, Department for International Trade, you know, there's a certain amount of holding of breath as to whether they're going to be dealing with a Republican government um, when it gets to the crunch on these negotiations or whether they're going to be dealing with a Democratic government um, at this stage, that's anybody's guess. It's also just worth noting that, as I mentioned, these are being these negotiations being handled by the Department of International Trade. And they have recently set up a series of uh, trade advisory groups. And there is an agricultural trade advisory group, which is um, populated with a range of people from across the sector. Um, it is very well represented in the fresh produce industry. Uh, but there are these, these trade advisory groups which are there to oversee um, or to advise the Department of Trade on what they're doing. 
uh, and hopefully keep them on to a greater or lesser extent the straight and narrow in terms of what's being discussed. And let's just round up with um, a question on this uh, issue of import tariffs. Um, I wouldn't profess to be an expert on import tariffs because they're quite difficult to understand. But what I thought it might be useful to do is just to share with you um, a couple of shots from uh, the new global tariff regime. Uh, and this one you can see at the moment looks at um, grasses. And I'm sure this is the tariff that will apply um, to exports in 2021. So any exports going out of the UK into the EU in the event of a no deal situation would attract a 2% tariff. Uh, the next one is on grass seeds, um, and I'm suspect I'm looking here probably at imports. And as you can see, um, you know, it's a relatively neutral position. Uh, there wouldn't be any tariffs on imports, as far as I can understand. Uh, and the final area I just thought I might share with you is on kit, um, because obviously uh, there's quite a lot of uh, machinery that's imported from. Uh, the EU into the UK, uh, and useful there to see that uh, in the event of a no deal, the, that will be zero tariffed uh, in the future, again, as far as I can understand. So if we just sum up um, on the current situation, you know, we are in a time of change. Um, change can be scary, but it can bring with it a lot of opportunity. And I think for those um, parts of the agricultural industry that aren't wholly reliant on the support scheme, you know, there could be some interesting opportunities ahead. I think the message is take nothing for granted. Um, and we shouldn't assume that anybody in government has got an over amount of knowledge about the industry generally or about the turf grass industry specifically. I think the government is very keen to find some winners as a result of all this change that's going on. Uh, they like good news stories and we shouldn't be shy of sticking our head above the parapet and saying, yeah, this is a really interesting opportunity, um, an interesting industry. It might not be very big, but you know, there are some really opportunity, good opportunities here. So I think really the final word from me is we need to just understand how turf grass fits into this brave new world and make sure that as the weeks uh, and months roll on, government understands together with the industry where and how to realise any opportunities um, from this new uh, world in which we're all going to occupy. I hope that's giving you some sort of indication of where we're going um, of what's happening at the moment. Um, and here at British Growers, if anybody's got any questions, you know, or wants to contact us or wants to discuss anything that I've uh, come up with, um, or wants to use this as an opportunity to feed into DEFRA on the ongoing discussions, you know, you know where we are, please feel free to get in contact. Thanks, Jack. Uh, thank you very much for a superb overview of agriculture after Brexit. Some extremely useful information there uh, related to not just agriculture, but the turf grass industry. So that's great. I'll certainly watch the video again on YouTube. Uh, and uh, there were a couple of points uh, that I think are, are worthy of note. Um, first and foremost, the, the, the various schemes within DEFRA you mentioned, such as land management scheme, something perhaps the British growers could help the, the TGA membership with. Uh, there's some R&D opportunities uh, and, um, and the knowledge exchange uh, information uh, and links. And I think that could also provide some useful tax efficient savings for turf growers. Uh, and I particularly like the bit about silt and cheese. Uh, of course, that is close to turf growers' hearts, as we did have a number of meetings at Stilton. Uh, and, um, and finally, perhaps just drawing everybody's eye to the tariff page at the end, which would be quite, quite useful. So thank you again, Jack.